Hey guys, Cotton Grammar here with Assimilation Project Assimilation 2016 bonus Q&A webinar. We've had a lot of people ask a lot of questions that literally is just too difficult to answer writing back and forth on Facebook or a personal message. So we decided to get you started the official kickoff of Assimilation 2016 is a few days away. That's January 1st. That's when your official membership kicks in and you got us for a whole year. So that's exciting. So what we're going to do today, guys, is before I started the recording, I asked everyone to just kind of put in where they were from. We got plenty of people from Texas, Colorado, India, Denver, South Carolina, Toronto, North Carolina. A lot of people's with us. Let me give you the game plan, what we're going to do today. Then I'm, I'm going to introduce you to my amazing co-host here today, Stephen Floyd. We're going to comb through the Facebook group first and answer any questions that have left unanswered or that we feel that need a broader answer to it. And then we're going to go inside of your go-to webinar chat box and any questions that you've got in there. We're going to try to get to all of them today. We're going to be around an hour for sure, depending on how the questions go. And if there's a lot of them, then we're able to stay a little bit longer. So please get all your questions in. And we'll go from there. But I'd like to introduce you to my co-host, Stephen Floyd. How's it going, buddy? Hey, man. It's uh, it's going great. You know, it's funny. My uh, my wife and uh, thought that our kids should go see the new Star Wars. And so what we've been doing for the last couple of days has just been a Star Wars uh, marathon with uh, me and my wife and my kids. So Return of the Jedi is coming up right after this webinar. And then oh, wow. we're all going to go see it uh, tomorrow morning, actually. So wow. it's, been, it's, been pretty, it's been pretty cool, except it's, it's funny with my kids. It's, you know, over We watched it in order from one, right? We didn't start with Star Wars. We started with Phantom Menace and went, like, in, mm. you know, chron chronological order, not the order they were filmed in. So, mm. so we, get to like, we get to, like, Star Wars, and both of my girls are like, but, but that's your daughter. But, but that's your daughter, you know, with, with, <laughs> right. with Vader and Lance and stuff. So uh, it's, it's, it's pretty funny, man, but it, it's cool kind of sharing that with them. You know, I, I saw it when I was eight. I saw Star Wars at a, at a drive-in movie theater, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome to kind of be able to share that with my kids. Absolutely. So it's been fun. Yeah, I went through and watched the original, but uh, I did not go back and uh, like the ones that came out in seventies and eighties. I, I did go back and watch the prequels before I watched the other one. But uh, you know, it's amazing what a good job they did with the continuity. Mm -hmm. You know, when you consider all the different elements, you know, mm -hmm. through you know over six films, I think it's pretty incredible. You know, that they were able to you know to maintain mm -hmm. continuity in the storyline and make it plausible and all that. So. Sure. It's just going to be so much fun tomorrow. But, you know, holidays are fun. I know you've been hanging out yep. uh, with people yeah. and stuff. So Definitely. it's a good time of the year. I totally agree. Well, guys, without further ado, we're going to dive in right to the questions and get going. First one up, and we're going to, like I said, attack Facebook first. Then we're going to go to the GoToWebinar chat box for your questions there for those of you live right now. So Darren wants to know, he says, I have a couple questions. And I wonder if you guys can read along with me. He says, I don't know if I can make it live. Uh, it says, but how does your day servicing process look like after someone is sold? You create a checklist. If so, is that available at all? The answer to that is no. If by leveraging outsourcing the most, what does the cost look like? And is and this is in all videos, right? So let's just tackle that part of it first because I'm kind of like the client or uh, expert of uh, OMG. I have 116 clients right now. I don't really share my back end process right now. Do I have a checklist? Absolutely. And I think you guys should as well. Uh, we will be discussing more about how to do the back end process with that. And I'm not quite sure what he's asking about in videos, but how does my day of servicing look like? My day's not going to be, uh, I really couldn't answer that in a way that would help you because of me being a, a partner of OMG. Uh, that, that takes up a lot of my day, but generally guys, what you really should start doing is, is when you learn how to link out effectively. In other words, you know how to do SEO effectively. What I do is a little tip that I'll give you right now is the day, the exact day that I get a client, I map out all of their SEO in about two hours. And I write it all down on a spreadsheet as if it was done exactly when the links will go, when it's done, and I integrate that in a calendar so it reminds me of what links I need to put out for that day 
with anchor text, the websites I've selected, and everything. So every day when I wake up, I see what my tasks are. I get them done, and then I'm doing research and development, OMG, and other stuff after that. So hopefully that answers the first part of your question. So the reason to ask is I hear one person doing 500K per month. You have to leverage your time. One person, yeah, that's me, but I'm not 500, I'm 600. You have to leverage your time somewhere in order to service that workload. And it seems to me to be a big workload with all those revenues. Am I way up base? Yeah, you're way up base. It literally takes me uh, about an hour to – hold on. I got Liz and Michael Bittler here with us. You guys taking off? Yeah. We're in the back. Cool. Great. Have fun. Sure. Uh, we got Liz Herrera and Michael Bittler that are visiting me today, so they're going to head off and come right back. But no, guys, literally I don't spend any more than an hour a day uh, dealing with my clients. And it's a much too broad of a topic just to be on a Q&A webinar. It's one of those things is what's the story of life? Guys, let's get some clients first. And for those of you that have clients or that are looking to scale up, what I don't want to waste these Q&R webinars on is problems that you don't have yet. So if you're having a problem ranking or if you're having a problem getting going, yes. But knowing how I'm handling 116 clients is of no use if you don't have one. It's just useless information. And I've always told everyone this on webinars. When you get to 20 or 30 clients and you're having a difficult problem scaling, message me personally, and I will personally get on the phone with you and discuss with you scaling. So hopefully that answers the question. So Darren, if you're at the position to where you've got 20 plus clients, message me. I will happily walk you through it one-on-one. -on -one. So I don't want to waste people's time going over problems they don't have. Next up is Tasha Kidd. She says, if I can make it back in time, that's really not a question. Uh, is it possible? Stephen, I'm going to throw this one to you. Uh, you can go ahead and read it because you're following the screen with me. Doing David or Christopher? Right here. Uh, oh, Christopher, okay. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't see that as a question. Yeah, we can grab this one right here. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, can you do SEO for local businesses in a country with a different language to your own? Um, can you? Absolutely. Um, you're typically going to want to do all the content, though, that you do for your client and you're linking in the language, you know, wherever you're trying to rank. So, for instance, if you're in the U.S. and you're doing Canada and the area is primarily uh, French, let's just say, not that it is all the time in Canada, but I'm saying let's say it is, then, yes, you would want your content and things to be French. Can you rank with uh, the wrong language? Yes, you absolutely can do it, but I, I wouldn't suggest it. Great. You can go ahead and take the next one, too, if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is it possible to open more than one LinkedIn account? For example, if I have an existing profile in a completely different industry, can I open another account that relates just to SEO? Um, it does violate LinkedIn's terms of service when you do that. Can you do it? Of course you can. You can have 100 accounts. So, um, you know, it's up to you uh, how you want to do that. Um, you know, you, you basically – you wouldn't be promoting both as you. You know, if you did it that way. Now, the one thing you can do is you could have one for your business, uh, Chris, and one for you personally. So if you have a, an actual business, uh, you know, you could have one account for that business and that could, you know, do a, a particular industry or whatever. And then but your personal one, you're really only supposed to have one personal account. Mm -hmm. Great. Next question is Jennifer. She wants to know will Amazon business model work for her in South Africa. Yes. And just, I want to make this very clear to everyone. Stephen and I are not Amazon experts. We are search engine optimization experts. Stephen is a vast knowledge of maps, local client SEO, all forms of ranking tools, social media. Stephen knows everything. Me as SEO clients and, uh, and this everything search engine optimization related with both Stephen and I, we don't, have or do Amazon stuff. Now, Stephen, you do do e-commerce, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. right. So if there's any e-commerce questions you have, Stephen's fantastic for that. But overall, absolutely. Amazon restrictions, just uh, Jennifer, post it and tag Liz in your question inside the group. And Liz is fantastic about getting back to all of your questions in there. So just tag Liz, Michael Bittler, Suzanne McDowell, any of those they're happy to help you, and they would know everything about uh, South Africa restrictions there. So to Ryan Henderson, related to Google dorking, do you know of any websites like Lead Ferret for Australia? I do not. I would have to dig into that. A simple Google search would probably be able to help you out with that. Uh, Ryan's next question is, if a potential client's keywords have low search volume between 20 and 200, 
and considering uh, there are more than 10 or 15 such keywords, do you quote them per keyword or is total traffic or approximately it was like total traffic makes more sense. But uh, guys, I don't ever deal with, and this is going to sound complicated and I do it very different than other SEOs. I don't care what search volume is. I quote via the weight of the move. So I look at myself as a digital mover. I move sites from point A to point B. I use the Moz keyword difficulty tool that tells me exactly how hard it's going to be for me to rank something. My time, my resources, and my energy. I don't care if it's 10,000 search or I don't care if there's no search. The cost is the same with me because it's going to take the same amount of resources once I get a keyword difficulty. So that's what I quote things by. Generally, uh, I really don't get into 10 or 15 keywords. Uh, I just tell people, hey, look, pick a couple potential keywords that you really want to go after and the vacuum of how I do SEO is probably going to pull up a lot of the keywords that you want anyway. Steven, I'll let you go ahead and answer this one because you'll have a totally different answer. No, actually, I'm, I'm transitioning into what you're doing um, pretty much like everything um, since I've met you. Um, you know, if, if the model that he's working on, uh, there is training inside OMG on this, uh, on how to, to do this kind of pricing, Ryan. Um, and so, you know, you can definitely follow that. Um, you know, Cotton's Way is Cotton's Way. It works for him, and I think a lot of us are, are transitioning toward that because pretty much everything he does is probably the best way to do it. Um, but the, to answer your question specifically, there is exact training on this in the members area on how to uh, guesstimate, uh, you know, uh, traffic value uh, and things like that uh, based on pay-per-click uh, amount and based on traffic uh, you know, in terms and things. So, um, like Cotton said, what I have been doing though, and I am transitioning more toward what he does, but what I do is almost the same thing that he just said. I, I pick, you know, two or three trophies that I know are going to bring in value. And just like Cotton said, um, when I rank those trophy keywords, it's going to rank a shit ton of long tails and medium tails. So, um, you know, you have to remember too that, you know, um, uh, a lot of times, you know, what the client, you know, uh, the keywords the client wants may or may not be the best thing, may or may not have value. So, you know, um, you know, just just pick your battles there. But I pick two or three typically, and that's what I'm going to go for, um, and that's what we're going to charge on, and all that. The rest really is just it's just icing on the cake. Sure. So I, so yeah. I will add one more thing to that. Stephen and I are specifically talking about one keyword and if someone wants related keywords with it like if we're talking about you know they want bread hot bread warm bread things like that but if but if my client is coming up to me and they want to rank in different cities like let's say they want St. Louis SEO they want Miami SEO and Chicago SEO I treat those as entirely different clients and I price them yeah. out as each website because they're entirely different keywords. Even though they sound related, they have their own level of difficulty. It's, it's almost like saying you walk into a house and you see a grand piano and go, oh, that's the blue grand piano, the yellow grand piano, and the red grand piano. And the weight of moving these, a mover is not going to say, oh, you got three? We'll just throw them all into the price of one. No, you, you get charged by each piano because of the difficulty, the weight, and and your time and energy and, and getting it up. So that's that's what I want to make very, very, very clear to you. Related keywords is what Stephen and I was talking about. Related keywords. Like if you're in uh, – Stephen's in Dallas. So if we're talking about Dallas Bakery, you know, best Dallas Bakery, Dallas Bakery, Dallas Bakery muffins, things like that, yes. But if, but if he's wanting to do San Antonio Bakery, Stephen, you're going to charge him like another client, aren't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and, yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because that's, that's a whole different deal. So on that, I mean, I'm going to give them uh, – I, I typically am going to do like a discount. So, you know, whatever I'm charging them for the primary one, you know, I'm not just going to triple that if there's three of them. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut them some type of a break. But definitely, like Cotton said, you know, you're looking at three – that's three completely different things. Like he said, that's like three different clients. So – yeah, the prices, you know, are going to get pretty high on that. 
You know, sure. and I, I usually tell my clients, this may seem counterintuitive, guys, what I'm about to say, so take it at your own risk, right? But with clients, a lot of times like that, if I'm just starting out with them, um, I, I'm going to advise them just to let's get one. You know, let's kill one, and, and then let's go get two or three or four or whatever because what I found is when I did it the other way, a lot of times, you know, we launched these five different campaigns, and then two or three months in, they're broke, right? They didn't, they didn't really have the resources to keep going, and so then I lose the client. Um, whereas, you know, if we, if we focused on one and we killed it, then they, now I know they have the money to keep paying me to build two and three and four and five or whatever. So mm-hmm. just, just, just a tip from my, you know, 12 years of experience now. Start, sure. start small and keep going. Unless it's a company that has the resources, you know it, to do it. And like Cotton, that's probably most of the company he's dealing with. He, he doesn't do, you know, I still do a lot of little ones. So, you know, Cotton's probably dealing with companies that have, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 dollar budgets. They can afford to go ahead and, and launch campaigns with him. But if you're talking about your average roofer, your average plumber, they don't want to start going after eight cities at once. They need to kill the city they're in. Once once you own that SERP, then move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, to let you know if this is making sense, if everything we're saying making sense, just give me hashtag OMG right here. I want to see how many people we got on. And, guys, I like know that some of you have messaged me on Facebook seeing that you don't have access to this group. If you don't have access to this group, you need to message me right now with your email address that you use to pay for project assimilation and do it that way. And just How did they get the webinar link? Was it sent out? Uh, David might have done it. I didn't look to see. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. And I don't know where <laughs> David pushed this webinar out to. Uh, okay. So that's why. So if you're not in it, I'll get to the bottom of why you're not in it. Absolutely. A lot of people listening. So uh, right. let's go back up to the next question. And Ryan says, uh, question, is someone starting off with client SEO, what methods do you recommend I start for client getting? I have my meetup calendar scheduled for January. And with YP struggling to reach decision makers, what else should I be doing? Guys, it's simple this. I'm going to give you the best advice I can give you for starting out. What you need to do is by any means necessary, build your first seed amount of clients. And I'm talking about from five to 10. Then you can start snowballing these clients from referrals, getting other stuff. And we're going to cover a lot more of that here in the next coming weeks. But guys, what I want you to do is follow the money. Where you're at right now is for one, think about it. You know, friends, family, business owners, other people, you need to be going that route first. There's no, there's nothing better than to start off with right around you. And then I want you to start thinking, where's money at? Where's money? And and how can you get people working for you at no cost? In other words, you make them your affiliate. And there's a lot of places, guys. I have people at the Audi dealer, at the BMW dealer, at the Mercedes dealer, uh, car salesmen that all work for me, and they send me clients, and I give them a percentage of what they send me. Now, I, they only get paid if someone signs up, obviously. But guys, think and follow where money is at. You know, you could go to your local charity. You could go to, you know, fundraisers and other stuff. Guys, these are people that have disposable income and money. But ultimately, client getting comes down to one important factor. That is, if you don't believe in it and you don't feel comfortable doing it, you're not going to have success with it. If I tell you and that you need to be doing meetup.com, starting your own meetup, which you should, and in your own city to set up your page, set up your city, and start it. And if you absolutely are against it and hate it, you're going to make yourself right. And you're going to fail before you start. So you have to come in with an open frame of mind, and but also you have to literally do something that you feel comfortable with. That's why certain people love getting on the phone and cold calling businesses. They love it. I hate it. You know, I, I don't think Steven likes it. So if you no, don't I, like it, yeah. But if you don't like I, it, Steven, how can you be good at it? Yeah, you know what? I mean, I totally agree with you. You know, and, and you know, there's a lot, guys, we, you know, as you watch through the webinars, especially the assimilation webinars, we give you lots of different ideas on how to, to get your foot in the door and how to get clients going. I'll tell you, this is this is one little thing. This is, you know, not an entry-level strategy necessarily, but it may be for you, you know, where you're at in your business. I'll tell you two of the best uh, best purchases I ever made, Cotton. One of them was my uh, country club membership. 
um, which I, I don't even go there. Uh, my wife does. She goes and has lunch with like friends and stuff. She absolutely loves it. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm sorry, I didn't go there when we started. I'm, but you know, once I started seeing, I went. She got me in one time, and I kind of saw the parking lot, which of course you'd think that a light bulb would go off in my head uh, about that. But I joined it to make my wife happy. Um, but uh, the contacts that I've made through that ha- pay for the uh, membership about a thousand times over. Um, and then, and then the other thing is um, golf. I have a membership to the golf, uh, you know, thing. I don't even play golf, right? Um, I, I, I don't like golf, but I go out. I go out with friends. I go out with associates. And you know, those two things more than anything, man. Uh, you know, uh, man, talk about where go where the money is. Mm-hmm. You know, people that can afford a, a country club membership. And, and I'll tell you guys, in my area, it's only fifteen hundred bucks a year. So that may or may not sound like a lot of money to you, um, but you know I'm not telling you to go do those two things. But what I am telling you is, like Cotton said, go where the money is. Go where the money is because you know that is going to get you there. You know, and you you know somebody. Everyone on this webinar right now knows somebody in their family or a close friend that either has money or is close to money. You, you all do. I guarantee you. You at least have one. Maybe it's your uncle Stan or something. You know that owns a, a business or whatever. Everyone on this webinar knows somebody in their family or in a close friend that has money or is real close to money. Sit down, make a list, and start figuring out how to take advantage of that. You know you can deliver the service, okay? We know you can. You, you're going to be able to rank them. That's that's a given in this group. If you follow our training, you're going to be able to deliver. So you know all you need to do is go out and start making those contacts, like Cotton said. Follow the money. Follow the money. That's how I did it. That's how Cotton did it. You know. Do what we do. Sure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a link in here, that I, an article that I wrote in the Facebook group. It's SEO splitting. That's what uh, you should be doing right there, guys. That's your foot in the door. If you want to know how to get your foot in the door, read that article that I just put right there. I, I wrote it well over a year ago. It's solid gold. Still holds up to this yep. day. So just if you, you know, I'll tell you. Yeah, I mean, if you guys, if you you if you tell me that you uh, tried, you know, tried family and friends, and you read that SEO splitting, and you're doing it and it's not working, <clears throat> then something's majorly wrong, because it works. It's worked for hundreds of people or thousands of people. Uh, it's just, I'm just telling you, it's going to work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, are you going to close every person you talk to? Of course not. Right, but that what Cotton just gave you is absolutely solid gold, and I'm telling you, there's people in OMG and people in other groups that make their full time living just off that one exact thing Cotton just showed you. They don't do anything else. Everybody always wants to know, hey, Stephen, what's a way to prospect? Give me another prospecting method. I'm like, I don't want to give you 15 different methods to prospect. We gave you the gold. Why, why do you want to know 20 ways to do something when we give you the best ways right up front? Ignore that other crap. You know, when you have an agency and 50 employees and you're scaling, then come talk to us about, uh, you know, about advanced prospecting methods or whatever. But if you do just what Cotton put in that article, you should get to 10K. If you can't, something's wrong. Sure. I mean, we just the proof is overwhelming, guys. We've seen it over and over and over and over again. Sure. Guys, for those of you that are messaging me about getting in this Facebook group right now, I'm on a webinar. I'm not going to be able to do it right now. I'll like get to it afterwards. So sending. Three or four messages in a row is not going to speed up the process any faster. Just letting you know. So uh, next next question: Can call tracking numbers be used to verify local listings with Google, Stephen? I have no idea. The answer is yes, you can. I can go to Callfire. I can forward that number right to my cell phone, and I can use it. And if Google wants to, that's a real phone number, guys. If if if, if I'm mistaken, what he's asking for. Can a call fire number or Flywire or any of these like that I get and use for my local cities, can they be used to verify your Google My Business account if you have a legitimate business there and it's real and you have a real location? Of course. That's what they're for. But I don't but anything else beyond that, I have no idea. You have to have a real location there. But the tracking numbers do work. I've like I've like done it a couple times. Uh down here. I think we've about got everyone. Hold on here. Nope. We got a couple more. It says, if I'm setting up a rank and rent similar to Gregory Ortiz, who has done this with National Chiropractic Directory, I'm doing it for a different niche altogether with city, state, suburb. Is there any, is there any way to have a PPL set up along with, the, I don't know what this R and R to use the power of the money site. Do you know what he's talking about? What's R and R? Yeah, he's talking about, he's talking about rank and rent. 
Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to let you handle this question because I don't do any of this sort of stuff uh, at, at all. So this is what, yeah. like, you guys teach more in Source University, so go ahead. Yeah. Um, Carrie, this is way too much for us to answer on a webinar. Um, you know, if, if, if I give you a yes and no answer, the yes, is, the answer would be yes. Um, you absolutely could um, do different, uh, you know, you could use subdomains, you know, for example, to accomplish some of what you're asking. The best place to ask that question would be to Gregory Ortiz. Uh, you know, again, we're, so we're going to, you know, we're going to stick with training that's in OMG. And that training and that example and all that stuff really is something that's not in OMG, not really the way you're asking it. So uh, better to ask Gregory Ortiz that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Next mm -hmm. question is, and this is going to, I like love these questions because we get these all the time. I have a real estate agent that wants to rank in the Google Snack Pack for his assigned neighborhood. It would be really easy for me to rank him there since there's really no competition. The problem is that his office address is in a different city from the neighborhood he wants to rank in. Is there still a way to rank him in the Snack Pack as he's requesting or is having an address in a different city going to be a problem? Not sure if a virtual address would be the solution because potential clients would get confused. They have some citations. Da, 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 da. One thing I'm going to say right now, and then I'm going to let Stephen handle the question from here on out. He's going to appreciate them leading off with this. Never, ever, and I'm going to keep saying this, and ever, 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 never sell just map listings. Ever. No snack pack. No map listings, no anything. Stephen, tell them why. Yeah, well, I mean, the the basic reason is is because you know you have to. The, the key to ranking the snack pack is is ranking organically. If you can't if you can't rank organically, you can't rank in the snack pack. So so focusing on that is you know, and, and especially now that there's three spaces, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, do we continue on with the rest? Well, or, see, we're, we have to realize that, that everyone's new. So, guys, what it all comes down to is you, you – know, what you're doing is is when you go out and you think it's easy to just sell a map listing, it's twice the work. That's why I refuse to guarantee it anymore with any of my clients. I say yep. as, an act, as an added bonus, we'll see where we're at at the end of our campaign. I will not promise these things. I will not promise these things. Ahead of time. The reason is, guys, because organic, you got to be at least on page one right now to get inside that snack pack. So if your client is like on page five, look at what you have to do. You now got to rank them on page one, possibly in the top five. Then, mm -hmm. then they might or might not show up in the map listings. Then you got to make sure they're optimized. But it's two separate tasks, two separate jobs, two separate things. I cut it off 100% of everything that I offer to people. I just offer to rank them. Then once I get them in the one, two or three position, that's when I try to get them in the snack pack. That's, that's, that's when I go, all right, I'm in a position now to where it should be showing up. Why isn't it? Or it'll just naturally show up there on its own by just like what Steven and I were talking about with the keywords, the vacuum of the power of how we're doing the SEO. And if we did everything right with SEO, the way I do things and the way Steven does things, it automatically ends up in there, doesn't it, Steve? Yeah, yeah it does. That's what happens. Right. Yeah, when you do the proper things to rank organically, it's it's almost 100% of the time going to rank you in maps. Right. It, it, just, it just is. So. so one of the biggest mistakes that I made early on, just so you guys know, to, just to not avoid this, is I specifically took on a business last year that had 27 different locations. And they did not give a damn about Google. They just wanted to be, and it was a seven pack last year. They just wanted to be in the seven pack. And like an idiot, I took it. And oh my God. <laughs> oh, never again. Never again. I learned a very valuable lesson, which is I had to do twice the work that I ever had to do with anywhere else. So that's just our advice. So just remember, you're going to have to rank them in the neighborhood that he's went to first. You might have to create a page, rank them in that neighborhood, uh, and then do everything you need to do to get them in the snack pack for the training that we have in there. Steven has got some – guys, there's one thing I do want to preview for 2016. Steven is going to have some absolutely altering 
No, nowhere on earth, Google Maps training and Google My Business training that is literally going to give you the edge over all the planet Earth. And I can't, I am excited to get my hands on it myself because even though Stephen and I talk every day, we don't really talk a lot of nitty gritty details business. But Stephen, any idea when those might be dropping? Yeah, you know what? Um, I'm, I've been mapping out the content this last few weeks, and um, I, I'm thinking it's going to be probably probably around the third or fourth week in in January. Mm-hmm. And of course, that's going to be coordinating with everybody else and, and all the other stuff that we're doing. Um, but but you know, there's things that the, the the funny thing about this kind of training, Cotton, as you know, is um, you know uh, I was I had a couple of these I actually made about a month ago in anticipation, and already it's changed. <laughs> You know, already, already, you know, Google, that's what's great about our, our job, you know, uh, Google has changed some things. And so now I'm going to go back and, and redo those videos. But that's one thing that, you know, I want you to know, you know, once we, uh, once we make these, once we put them in, you know, um, the training I'm going to give you is going to be stuff that, that absolutely should carry you for at least 12 months. Um, not that there's not going to be tweaks that we're going to talk about in, in ongoing training and things like that. Um, but I'm going to make sure as much as humanly possible that the core stuff, you know, it's going to be there. And I'll tell you one thing, you know, um, and this is, you know, a big hint, honestly, from me, having done this as long as I have, the, the way to do maps has not significantly changed in the last two or three years. It really hasn't, guys. 95% of the formula has stayed the same. So, you know, when I say that, you know, we're going to give you something that's solid and that there will be updates and tweaks, it's just that 5%. 95% of what we're going to do, of what I'm going to show you, is not going to change probably for years because there's only so many things that they can measure. There's only so many things that you can control. So um, I'm I'm pretty excited about it. You know, I keep I keep remaking them and remaking them, cotton. So mm-hmm. I just I just you know I've got everything in there, you know, and then I think, right. well, I should put in one more thing, you know, and and so uh, yeah, I'm excited. So so probably the end of January, but it's going to be I don't know how many videos at a time. I'm going to go into things like citations, like I promise you, you've never seen anywhere on the planet. I'm going to go deep, deep, deep uh, into uh, lots of questions you guys ask a lot uh, in the group, uh, especially in the main Facebook group. All kinds of weird questions and stuff. You know, I've been holding on to that stuff. I know, I know these answers. They, you know, there's the, these these things. You know, uh, are are not uncommon. And so now I'm going to be able to go ahead and create specific videos that answer. You know. A lot of the big questions, you know, like multiple locations is one of the biggest things, Cotton, that I get. You know, how on earth do I do, you know, uh, the maps, you know, uh, in, if I have, you know, 10 locations? Or, you know, how do I, you know, do Google My Business and all that stuff? So I'm, I'm pumped about it. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait. Great. Guys, we're definitely looking forward to that. So you're going to get the best maps training alive. So just be prepared for that. Uh, we'll just do a couple more from here. And, yes, we do know that there are questions there. We're going to get to all of them, guys. Trust me. Uh, it says, are followed tier one links still worth getting and boosting more than no followed links? Well, of course. So I said, yeah, yeah, let's go to the next one. I, I don't even, I, I don't even <laughs> that, understand that. Yeah, uh, Simon. I mean, honestly, that's probably one of the most underutilized things, uh, that, that we do as beginner SEOs and that we don't do as advanced SEOs. Mm-hmm. If you've got a really solid tier one link, right? then, you know, putting some power behind that a lot of times is going to be one of your best investments. Mm-hmm. So and absolutely. Sure. Michael, with this question right here, uh, I don't want to answer it based on it's going to confuse other people and it's an anomaly. It's something yeah. that I'm that I'm like doing that you are never going to be able to replicate, that I can't replicate. It's a one of a kind situation that was fixed due to a problem. And I'm going to tell you why. And then please don't ask any more questions because it just doesn't <laughs> It is a penalized, it is a penalized site. It's a penalized site. So that's why. So it's not, it, it'll confuse you more than it would explaining it. Okay. Uh, this last one here, has anyone seen or experienced Yelp business pages being de-indexed? Stephen, that would be up your alley. Nope. Great. Now we will move to the uh, chat thread and uh, get to what is in the go to webinar questions and i'm glad there's a question i was looking for yesterday in regards to gsa blasts and guys just to let you know you're not going to be able to see these questions these are questions that only steven and i can see so that's why we're reading them out it says guys in regards to gsa blasts for high da properties does it still work can you recommend places to get blasts by reputable gsa users 
determine how much to use. Well, Dusty, this is what I'd like to answer to you. Uh, and, and, I, and I'd like for you to answer me back if you're still on. Are you currently ranking number one anywhere at the moment with any sort of major keyword? Can you answer me pretty quickly so we can see it? Want to know. And the reason is, is if, if you're not ranking number, he says yes. Tell me where. Just type it in. Only, only Stephen and I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Only us. Can, only we can see it. Yeah. No one else can see it. Just us. Give us the keyword. And we'll like, we'll like wait for you to answer. And uh, uh, that's that's like not a competitive keyword. That's a lower to mild level competitive keyword. And yeah. This is what, but, but that's still a great job and congratulations on that number one. Yeah, the reason, absolutely. the reason is, is how, how I'm going to answer you until you have learned to truly take a number one with a competitive keyword like Chicago SEO, St. Louis SEO, or just, and I'm just naming a few, there's other keywords besides that, then I don't recommend you to get at getting anywhere near GSA until you've learned the fundamentals of how to push a site up the way Greg Morrison teaches you. Greg Morrison doesn't use GSA. I don't use GSA and look at the rankings that we have. So uh, can I recommend you? Uh, no. And the reason is I don't think you're experienced enough to know how to handle that sort of tool and not blow your stuff up. That's why. Because what happens is everyone that messes with GSA, and I know Stephen can confirm this, and, and I'll even tell you myself, I've blown up a dozen sites just playing around with GSA. Stephen, how many sites have you blown up learning it and getting acquainted with it? Oh man, probably hit 50 to 75 easy. And I mean, I've been using right. GSA since like it came out. So right. yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so with you guys, right. So with you guys being brand new in OMG, I want you to make money. I don't want you to take shortcuts. Guys, if you haven't, and I'm going to post these webinars in here, the 30K webinar from OMG. And if you haven't watched the OMG mindset webinar, you need to do so. Guys, the biggest mistake that all SEOs can make when they first get in it is to try to take shortcuts. Shortcuts kill. They kill. The reason is when you hear about these loopholes and these shortcuts, that's why it's called a loophole because it gets closed up. Now, I've had my sites ranking now for over two years. And so what I'm saying is build a solid foundation. It takes a little bit longer, but when you try to do shortcuts, it does. Now, you might have people try to tell you different. There's other OMGers, and I'll argue with them, and I'll ask them where their rankings are at compared to mine that'll, that'll like tell you that they're going to GSA and they rank stuff, but then they start fumbling around, and they can't produce where they rank at. So what I'm trying to tell you is I don't recommend it. I would stay away from it until you can message me and say, hey, look, here's this keyword right here. What we're concerned about is your success. What I don't want you to do is to take a very, very good site. And, and to try to use GSA and to destroy it when you could have made money with it. So Absolutely. that's what I heard. Steven is also yeah. amazing at GSA. Uh, maybe I can twist his arm and Steven can do a beginner's lesson of GSA in the next uh, month or two. And uh, obviously, if there's a big popular demand for that, he can. But Steven yeah. would still tell you to, to do it with caution, with caution. Yeah. I mean, guys, honestly, you know, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to use an analogy here and please listen. And 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 by the way, that was a great question. Um, and it's good because these it allowed us to, to give you a, a really good answer, I, I hope, um, and give you some really valuable training here. So, you know, if you think about think about bodybuilding, OK, if you want to be a professional bodybuilder, OK, and, you know, you're going to eat right, you're going to work out hard. Right. You're going to maybe take some vitamins and things like that. Right. Um, and then maybe if you're a pro at the very end, maybe, you know, you're going to do some steroids or something, right, or some EPAs, okay? So let's say – so what I want you to understand is the core of what we teach at OMG, what Greg teaches, that's the eating right and working out, okay? And, and you know, um, and if you do all that the right way, you're going to get – you know, you're going to get big. You're going to get huge. Um, but if you, you know, need that – I mean, just that – at the very end, that little steroid boost – that's where all these thousands of other methods come in. But here's the thing you need to understand. When you try to use, if you were to just, if I was just to go take some steroid shots every day without working out and eating right, you know what happened? I'd just get fat, right? That's what would happen. I would just get fat, and that would destroy my health. So when you are, you know, like Cotton said, focus on the basics because that's what ranks. That's how Greg ranks. That's how Cotton ranks. That's how I rank. 
that's how every coach in OMG ranks. That's how we have ranked for years now. Um, and so that's what works. And then if you get a sticky situation and you just, you know, are pulling your hair out, and, you know, way down the road, then you can look at some of this other stuff. Um, but I, I would tell you this, and please hear this. If you try to do GSA on your own, I would give you a 95% chance that you're going to screw up your site. Absolutely. Uh, or your test site. I, I give you a 5% chance of success because there's there's multiple components that you just have to do, and they're little things just a certain way that I don't know very many people that know them. I know a couple yeah. people that do. And if you don't do these tiny little things, you're going to blow stuff up. So yep. please please avoid. It. Yeah, I wouldn't even never even I'd never even talk about GSA again. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't I don't think it's 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 even relevant for 99.9 percent of OMGers. Right. It's just not. Yeah. Guys, if that makes sense, give me a hashtag. Makes sense right up in here. Just makes sense. Give me that to here. Makes sense. I mean, G- Greg Greg Morrison has never opened up GSA. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you know. That alone should just be enough, right? He, I, he probably doesn't even know what it stands for, I bet. <laughs> you know, he doesn't right. need it. No, There's no I, point in it. <laughs> no, I don't, I, don't, I don't ever use it. I don't need yeah. to. So there's just so, it's just so much. God, man, there's so much stuff that goes wrong when you do that you forget one little yeah. tick off something to blow your whole side up. So we spent enough time on that. Uh, we, we got everyone that knowing uh, right there. Guys, here's another thing that I just want to drill in your head. Rest assured, I like know that you're just bombarded with shiny objects everywhere. OMG's a big investment for you. And you start hearing about all these guys and all these other little tiny blogs thinking they've developed something or they're using GSA for this and that. Guys, what I want you to understand is they have to do it because they're dying to, to just make money. If they were doing so well, they'd be out getting clients and they wouldn't be doing their little bitty baby blogs trying to be telling you they're one or two little things. So just keep, keep focused. Everything you're going to need is an OMG. You've seen our ranking proof. You've like seen everything. I don't care what anyone else is saying. I know by fact what's worked with us. So that's why I just want you to trust us. You're in here right now. Trust that we've got the rankings to prove to you that we know what we're doing because we do. But anyone else where you hear this advice from, always ask them, show me your rankings. Show me where you've had success with it. And you'll see them be quiet real quick. So we're just going to give you the bare bones truth here. So we'll move on to the next one. Uh, It says here, next one. For now, Facebook services only allow searches by categories. Do you know if it's going to change or stay like that? Stephen, because you are officially ordained part of the Facebook uh, <laughs> <laughs> services, and you know this, you're embedded in the Facebook uh, offices out in California. Are they going to change this soon, Stephen? Yeah, you know, me and Zuckerberg had breakfast this morning. You know, we, we talked about this exact <laughs> thing, actually, Cotton. It's funny, funny that it came up. Um, no, guys, obviously, I don't have any inside information that you guys don't have other than the fact that um, I'm pretty heavy into Facebook, um, even on the dev side and stuff, so I know a lot about it. It's going to obviously change at some point. Uh, it doesn't make any sense for the, the plans that they have for this, uh, for it not to be a, a more of a natural keyword searchable uh, database, like Cotton mentioned on the training that we did. Um, you know, they, they don't want it to be, you know, it would be very restrictive if it was only a category search. And since they want to expand it and blow it up, then obviously it's probably going to go to natural language search, uh, you know, like mobile and, and stuff like that. Even where people can go, hey, you know, where's a good restaurant, right? And then it, it sees where you're at, Geo, it sees you're in Dallas, Texas. And so it queries for you, you know, restaurant in Dallas, Texas, right? Looks at the reviews, boom, there's your result. So, yeah, I would say for sure, you know, if I have my crystal ball, there's a million percent chance it's going to go that way. Good. Next question is, when looking over a potential client site, where do you draw the line between spammy links you can recover and from a site detox? Way too complicated of a question to cover on a beginner's webinar. Uh, Guys, these are things that we're going to be covering in assimilation. These are things we're going to be covering there. Uh, You know, And I'm going to say this just for you, Dusty. You're asking really good questions, but these are questions I'd like to know that you're actually having problems with and not just curious. Uh, it's, it's your, your, I run a site detox no matter what with every new client that I get. And hopefully that sends you on your path, but I want to get to some other people that are struggling right now, having some other issues right now that we can get to. So the next one is, do you think it's doable to do business with the top ranked local business on a Facebook service search and to propose to optimize to rank it so it will stay in its first particular search. Uh, Steven, do you want to handle that? 
Well, yeah. I mean, if I understand your question, you're saying you want to approach people who are already number one and ask them if, if they're going to pay you to stay there. I don't think that sounds like a great strategy. Mm-hmm. Gotten? I, I just uh, – people yeah, who are I'll number one really aren't interested. Mm-hmm. Great. No, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. We're going to try to get to as many questions as we can to help as many people. Uh, the next question is, is there a way to stop referral spam? The sites that hit our analytics like socialbuttons.com, I know it's not a big deal, but I have a client asking about it, and I would like to know the answer that I can give them. Well, uh, Chris, I'm going to tell you what I tell my clients. That's above their pay grade to be worrying about. That if that if that if I thought that it was worth worrying about, I would have already let them know, and they need to let me do my job. And guys, when you get clients that thinks that they know more about you, uh, you know that's like me going into a doctor's office and trying to tell them how to operate on a patient. I don't let my clients try to tell me how I need to do my job. And if they ask me about it, I just give them a direct answer. It's not what I should tell them. I give them the honest answer. If I don't like where the referral traffic is coming in from, uh, then I'll just uh, uh, you know. I'll make sure that there's no links that are coming in from it. That's all I can do. Uh, so I will disavow that. But other words, if it's not hurting the ranking, guys, I get referral traffic in from everywhere. It doesn't hurt my rankings. It, you know, it, it just, it's one of these things to where you can micromanage down to just silly stuff. And honestly, that's all business owners know is they've, they've read a fortune magazine article or they've like read a ink magazine article that some guy that wrote the article heard from a buddy who heard from his nephew who's doing SEO, that that's something that you should watch out for. So, Chris, the answer is I wouldn't worry about it if it's not affecting rankings. That's just mine. Steven, you can have a totally different answer. Yeah, I mean, Cotton's answer is correct. Um, honestly, you know, again, that goes back to Cotton's velvet ropes method. Um, if you if this is super important, though, and you just need to have it done, um, you know, uh, Google uh, uh, Google this exact question. And you're going to find lots of articles on how to exclude referral traffic from Google Analytics reports because that's what's tripping them up. Uh, the other thing you can do is, uh, of course, you can use a, a, a plugin like Spider Spanker. Uh, sure. That people people think Spider Spanker is just for PBNs to hide them. It's not. It's a legitimate plugin to block unwanted bots, and that's what these are. They're unwanted bots. But so again, again, I would do a cotton sale. Yeah, you, <laughs> Stephen's 100% correct. But when you go and give them that real answer. They're going to want you to do it, and you're going to be spending hours of your life getting it right. And if it gets it right, oh, something came through. This comes through. You're going to have them on the phone with you all day. So Stephen actually answered it. Stephen answered it even better than I could, guys. There's a way that I set up my clients from the very beginning. If you haven't, scroll all the way down to to project assimilation. Watch me explain the velvet ropes. Guys, listen, when you bring in a client, how you set them up and, and their expectations of what's going to go on is exactly how the relationship goes from all the way through. I don't allow my clients to ask me those types of questions. They're not qualified to grade my work or ask those type of questions in, in my mind. I'm not going to talk to them like that. But when I get a question like this, I just simply say, you know, it's not affecting your rankings. I wouldn't worry about it at the moment. And is there any reason why you're concerned about that? And, and I'll listen to what they say. Go, my expertise says it's nothing I'd worry about at the moment. If he pushes it, I would say, where did you hear this information at? I go, look, I'm not trying to be forceful or I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but what makes you think that you're qualified to grade my work or that your level of expertise is better than mine? I'm going to tell you what to do. You don't do this with your doctor, do you? And then they be quiet. And then I let them get back to work and I get back to work. But that's how I generally handle it. You, you so, know, guys, I got I to gotta tell you, that this is the one thing that has changed my business in the last year more than anything else. This is the number one thing is is doing what Cotton just said. Doing Cotton's Velvet Ropes has changed my business more than anything ever has changed my business. So so watch that training. Do what Cotton does on this, please. It's going to make your life so much easier uh, over the long run and so much more profitable. People ask, you know, how do you do so much Cotton? Well, that's It's Velvet Ropes, guys. That's how he can manage, you know, uh, a million clients, right? It's because he, he sets the expectations up ahead of time, and he's not answering questions like this. He's just not dealing with it. You are. You're spending eight hours a day answering questions from, from five different clients. You know, he's not. So, so please, please watch that training. Uh, to me, I think it's, it's one of, if not the most valuable thing in the entire uh, OMG membership. It's just business changing. Thank you. 
we will we will move on to the next one. But ultimately, guys, just frame your frame your people right. I've I've honestly never had that question asked, and I've had over six hundred and fifty clients in my life, and I've and I've never had that question asked once. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, just just r- remember, someone you and someone have joined together in a partnership. You're not working for anyone. You're not working for anyone, and I really want to just really compound that. You, you, you know what? And and I just want to make sure everyone understands this, that you – I want you to do hashtag work self. I want you – that you're working for yourself. When someone hires you to do something, you're working for yourself. Guys, don't feel embarrassed. Do not feel ashamed that you're doing it by your way, your rules. You're the expert. You're the expert. You do not. Go to the doctor's office. You do not go to the dentist's office and you do not tell them that's not the right medication unless you have an allergy to it. You might ask them why, but the whole point of it is, is you don't go there and you say, listen, before you do surgery, you better not use a two scalpel on me. I like, I've like heard that that leaves too much scarring. I want you to use the four. They're going to look at you and they're going to tell you to get the hell out of their office. So that's what it's (laughs) right. Right. Yeah. One of the most valuable things that I'm going to do, and then we're going to go to the next question and we're going to get to all of them is, is what I found is guys, and you'll, and you'll find this happen. And trust me with new clients, if you don't frame them right, they're, they're quiet about during the middle weeks of the month, but then they start asking a lot of questions right before it's time to pay and right after because they feel like they have to get something out of it. So right, I'm like serious. As soon as they pay, I like start. You know, there's that's when base camp starts to get a little activity. You know, it's like, hey, uh, I was wanting to ask you a question because they almost feel like they they don't know what to do. They've just paid. It's like, well, I just paid. Damn it, I should ask a question. I mean, I I like I like I like should do something. So guys, just be prepared for that. And when you anticipate things like this, you can easily dissolve it. So, uh, you know, it's always something like that. So just and, keep that in mind. And can I throw in one more thing, Kyle? Sure, sure. Just real quick, guys. And this is um, this is kind of on – I hope this is on topic, and I hope everybody here is listening to this. This, this same concept actually applies when you're in the Facebook group and you ask a question to one of the coaches. Sometimes our answers may be short. Uh, we may give a simple yes or a simple no. When we do, please just go with it uh, if it's at all humanly possible because I know that there's a lot of people that do SEO who like to, you know, they like to know why, right? Like they want more information. You know, they it's like, you know, they're studying it or something, and, and that's cool. But, you know, if you're in the group and you ask a question and we give a simple answer, please just move on because, you know, what's happening is, you know, you're basically showing faith and trust in us that we know what we're doing, and, and we're not going to give you a simple answer unless we're, we're 100% sure. If, if you ask a question and I say yes, it means I'm 100% sure about it, okay? So, you know, and I'm, I'm just bringing that up because, you know, it kind of relates to what Cotton was just saying. Have trust in us. We know what we're doing. If we don't know the answer, we're going to tell you we don't know, but we're going to find it, mm-hmm. okay? Um, but, you know, as far as, like, teaching a class, like a lecture on SEO, you know, I get questions all the time where people, like, they say, hey, what's this? I answer, and then they want an explanation. And the explanation will take me ten times longer than if you just trusted me and move forward. So, so again, you know, uh, please, please do that when you can. Please know we're not being short or dismissive. Uh, it's just that, you know, if we feel like an explanation is necessary, then we'll do it. If we feel like it'll help the group, absolutely we'll do it. Great. So it's about your time and ours. Great. Thank you, Stephen. We're going to burn through some questions now. And, guys, we're going to answer these very, very quickly because that's all that they really need. Do we have to renew our PBNs if they expire after we rank number one? Absolutely. That's what holds up the power. That's like saying, should I keep my house up if, if, you know, if that's what's helping all of us live in it? Yes. Can't find the Facebook group. Cotton. Uh, I have a branded site I want to rank for my city SEO. Since the links I have now from citations and 2.0s are going to the home page, I'm confused if I should try to rank the home page or create a city page to have the city in the URL and try to rank that myself. Guys, I'm going to give you the general answer and we're going to bring this up right here. And we're just going to go cotton. Oh, can't even spell my name. We're going to bring up my, we're, we're going to bring up my site right now. Wow. I didn't even, there, there we go. So here's my site right here. So when we go here, this is the main page. The main page generally only ranks for my name, only ranks for my name. That's it. Now let's go to St. Louis SEO and 
trying to type fast so we can get to other questions. Let's go to St. Louis SEO. And what does that say? St. Louis SEO. Now, mm-hmm. now we're like up here. Let's go to Chicago. Well, I'm not spelling anything right. Bill, fix it. Chicago SEO. Let's like go to it. What's this? Chicago SEO. Got that? Yeah. So, so, so simple. And then when, then when we want to go to something like New Orleans SEO, it'll pull it up. I'm not spelling anything right. What does that say right there? So that should answer your question. That's, yep. that's exactly what you need to be doing. A, a partial EMD link is what this is called. Helps this helps push this up right there. Just that alone. Notice I didn't even have SEO in this one. I, I like just had New Orleans in there. That that lets Google know it's in the title and it's in the URL and it's also in my description that that's what the site's about. That's what I would encourage you to do. So yep. great. We'll go back to the Facebook group. Uh, next question is, it says question one. It says, if I'm getting setting up to rank and rent, oh, that's Greg Riotti. That's that's already same. posted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just some question. A lot of people were posting through. They were getting angry because we were answering in a Facebook group and not here. It says, when picking a domain for City Guide, who's doing City Guide still? Is this still SourceWave stuff? Steven? Um, y- yeah, I think actually it's – Is it's there stuff in OMG still- about this? Yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive there is. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, it just old. says – yeah, it's real old. It says, when yeah, picking, old. Yeah, it says, when picking a domain for City Guide, if Minneapolis Guide is taken, would you get Minneapolis, Minneapolis Minnesota Guide – uh, adding the state, is there a better way for the domain? Whatever you want, to be honest with you. It really doesn't matter. We're not going to give a right answer to you. It's what it's whatever you want to live with. You can do Minneapolis. You can uh you're like city guide can can like be one, two, three, four, nine, eight, seven, five. It can be any website name. So, yep. so it's just whatever you want to name it. So if if you're okay with with Minneapolis MN guide.com, then go for it. So next question yep. is would you please do a live surgery of PBN? Uh, we don't have time for that, Drew. Uh, yeah. un- unlike, un- un- unlike, fortunately, that's very complicated. Probably. That's not a question. That's a whole lesson. Yeah. Uh, it, next question is, in my search of PBNs, I'm finding that I'm passing all the foreign PBNs, and I'm wondering if you guys take advantage of them. I use foreign PBNs. You might get people tell you something different. But I, if there's a foreign PBN that has power, then it meet the metrics that I want. I definitely use them. So guys, I'm sorry for these short answers, but we're going to just keep moving quickly. Uh, it says, is it worth doing cold calling or emailing? Well, yes, of course. Absolutely. Why wouldn't it be? Guys, read the SEO splitting article and that's how I would approach them. It's very hard for someone to turn down something that is $20 on an impulse buy, especially something that they need. Uh, it says, could you, could you show us a workflow that we could duplicate? No, guys, you need to come up with your own workflow. I don't, I don't understand why your, Stephen's days and my days is not going to be what the day of a beginner is going to be. Guys, you really need to be studying the basics going through. This is, this is my advice to you. I be trying to go out and I trying to be getting clients all day long. All of you. I don't care if you're doing affiliate rank and rent or lead gen or Amazon or whatever. I'd be doing client SEO from nine to five. Then I'd take a little two hour break. I'd slap the kids in bed. I'd kiss your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, your daughters, your kids, whatever. About 839, I'd be doing SEO or I'd be training for SEO or I would be learning SEO with my videos or doing my SEO till about two in the morning until you hit $30,000 $30,000 a month. That's exactly what I'd be doing. Whether it's Amazon you want to do, whether it's affiliate or whether it's anything. Because right now you want instant income. The only way you're going to get instant income is to get clients. That's what I would do because you get clients during the day. You can do your SEO at night. That's my advice to you. That's the workflow that I would jump all over. Absolutely. Uh, it says next one is here now. It says if you could, if you do not have a local business you're doing SEO for, say that you're in for a national keyword, would it be beneficial to register the business as an address so you can do the citations? Guys, listen, you're like over analyzing citations. I use social profiles that like rank my site. You don't have to use citations. If it's a national keyword, I think what, what you and I are getting confused on, I call citations something I'm specifically trying to uh, use to push up my map listings, my NAP, 
And my social profiles are something that I use to brand my website. So if you have a national keyword, you don't need citations. You need social profiles. But you can still use citations for it. So it really doesn't matter. Does that make sense, Stephen? Yep, absolutely. Great. Let's move to the next one. Can you uh, can you use videos to generate leads for my reputation? Absolutely. That's absolutely. Liz like uses uh, YouTube to push traffic over to her Amazon listings. I've like used it. I have a video uh, that I believe that's got uh, 40,000 views on it that I use to push over to my website. So absolutely. Uh, next one is, uh, I'm trying to land my first client SEO as a demo. I've ranked five of their YouTube videos on page one and YouTube. I've not gotten their website to move past page six in Google, but I'm still working on building my first PBNs. This is a local realtor. And as far as I can tell, there are a lot of search guys with this realtor stuff right here. I'm just telling you right now, it's a very, and, and I already know that if you're working with a realtor, I don't even care if it's a local agency, they don't have a lot of money. And I'm going to tell you why I don't do real estate agents or why I'm not telling you not to telling you why I don't, they don't have any money. They don't have any money. And I only do people $4,000 is my minimum that I do. There's no real estate agent unless they're massive, especially a local agent or local realtor. These guys are barely making 50, $60,000 a year. They're, they're, they're barely feeding their families. So, so what happens is, is when you go to these places, the realtors also have so many sites that you've got to get past. They've got Zillow. They've got this and that. The best person that I would speak to who would give you the best words of advice for all of this stuff is Dave Keys. He's open to talk about all of this stuff. But, uh, you know, if it hasn't gotten, it says the local realtor, as far as I can tell, there's not a lot of search volume in YouTube. Would you go ahead and make a proposal for this work? It depends. I don't have enough information to help you with this. Bruce, message me directly. All I do my best to try to help you come up with pricing in a way where you can close these people to get a little bit of money in your pocket. Next one is John Rivera. Uh, what would you typically charge a client for mid range level? That's too broad of a question to answer. Someone wants to know what they would charge a client for mid level keyword in any given city. I, I just told you I'm a minimum $4,000 a month. Uh, I would put yourself, if you're brand new, a minimum of $2,000 a month. That's $500 a week, which means there's people at a Taco Bell drive through that makes just as that much. So if you think you're worth more than someone that works at a Taco Bell drive through charge more than $2,000. If you think that you're worth exactly the same amount of money as a full-time employee that works at the Taco Bell drive through charge $2,000 a month. That's my advice. Uh, next one, uh, Yellow Pages does not allow... Call service to verify. Done it twice this week. I have no idea what you're asking. Go ahead, Steve. Take, you yeah. I can take this one. Guys, right now, I need you to skip Yellow Pages. Okay? Just just skip it. What he's talking about is that they got bought by a company, and now um, they don't offer a free listing anymore. But you can update an old listing. But anyway, my answer, it, Dusty, again, just skip it. Just just either do what they want you to do, which is have the business owner verify, or skip it. It's not important enough to worry about. Great. Next question. It's the same people asking the same questions. This is what's funny. Now, there's like no one else asking questions. It's like the same three guys asking all the questions. Uh, w would it be a good, and, and I can tell you that they probably don't have any of these problems. They're just asking questions to ask them. It says, would it be a good idea to sell multiple ranking couple of web 2.0 properties in their actual businesses? You could take that, Steven. I have no idea what he's asking. Uh, no, it's not a good idea. Right. Because you don't own it. You can't sell a property you don't own. I mean, mm -hmm. so no, don't do that. Great. Guys, I'm going to skip some of you guys that have already asked about 47 questions of some of the people that we haven't got to. Um, yeah. And guys, I don't know what you're talking about when you're telling me to revert back to other people's questions in the Facebook group. Uh, I don't, I'm done with the Facebook group. So I, please ask the question back again. Um. It says, I've been getting, guys, you just heard what we said about GSA. We covered that. There's people asking more GSA questions. Here we go. Ranking some affiliate sites. Would Magic Submitter work well with 2.0s to power up a money site? If so, what trainings would you suggest I watch? I don't use Magic Submitter. There isn't one coach alive that uses Magic Submitter. So I can't recommend that because I don't use it, nor can any coach because no coaches use it. What do you use to power 2.0s? It's called PBNs. PBNs. That's what we use. So simple answer. 
It says, uh, what's your take on schema markup? I would use it. Fletch is going to be teaching that. There's, there's, there's no take on it. We're going to be going over that. Uh, Onyx bonus. I have no idea. You're going to have to talk to Onyx. We have nothing to do with Onyx bonuses. Uh, Onyx fulfills all of his bonuses. It says, Cotton, when you first started to actively look for clients, how many were you reaching out to per day on the average? I'm currently trying. I didn't do that. I just worked my butt off from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. six days a week. I don't go for that. I don't go for numbers. How hard am I working? And I'm talking about I worked until I was exhausted. Then when I was exhausted, I took a two-hour nap. Then I studied and I did SEO until 2 o'clock in the morning. And I woke up and I did it again and I only slept for six hours a night. And technically, that's what I still do. So that's my answer. Uh, next question is complete beginner. I'm struggling to get started. I've started a branding site and get that complete for credibility. But as far as link building PVNs, the video explained what it is, but not how to use them to create them. Absolutely. Michael, you need to watch the over the shoulder Iowa city, uh, series and that'll answer all of your questions right there. Yep. Next, next question is if you're planning on expanding to various cities in your area, would you start out with a branded website and then build silos? I don't do silos. Steven, you can answer that. When I hear the word silos, I automatically get turned off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, the answer is uh, yes. I mean, you can take the word silo out of it. You know, Cotton is using a directory. You know, when you see cottongrammar.com forward slash, you know, SEO Chicago. Um, so instead of a, a silo, he's using a directory structure. You can also use a subdomain to do that. So, yes, you want to start with a branded domain like Cotton did, and then you can expand out to have individual pages for your, for your locations. That's what you want to do. It says here, what's the exact, what's the ideal anchor text ratio, exact generic brand URL? Greg Morrison goes off this in his training. I encourage you to rewatch everything Greg Morrison and he goes over this to save the sake of time for us to just answer it here on the webinar. Uh, is it okay to spam links to tier two? Absolutely not. Next question. What, what it says, what do you provide the client with monthly? What sort of reports or software do you use? Is this in the training? I apologize if not, I've not found it yet. Uh, this is, no, we don't talk a lot about a back office. What do I provide the client with monthly? I provide them with a ranking report daily. It causes banner blindness so they don't bother me. So when they say I'm not doing anything, I give you a report every day. So they get the ranking report every day for me, and I don't do reports. And so software do I use? Uh, I use ProRank Tracker. That's it. But what else do I need to use? I'm not doing any fancy report, guys. That's ridiculous. The answer, look, they want to move from point A to point B. That's what it is. Don't get complicated in thinking that you got to do more than what you got to do because you don't. Just make it simple. And I like know this is going to sound crazy. I send reports every day, seven days a week. In their inbox, same time, every day, pissing them off, irritating them, creating banner blindness. So when they say I'm not doing any work, look, I send you reports every day. That's what I do. So that, that's good. Hopefully that answers your question because then they know I'm working and I don't ever get the question, what are you actually doing for your money? So if you get that question, just start sending them reports every day. Uh, it says here, good. just wanted to make sure of course a few other webinars have asked questions when the hot seat and they didn't seem to question. It says, uh, I want to make sure that you got, okay, now it says, uh, it says, can we create an official OMG thread for trading Facebook lights and tweaks? No, that is actually in your, if you want to trade Facebook likes and just do other stuff, we have that in OMG command center. You can go in and do that there where you can trade with other OMGers and that we just do the LinkedIn recommendations uh, thread right there because it's important for credibility, but other stuff like that, getting Facebook clicks and things like that use OMG command center. Obviously guys, I'm going to tell you that if you have one tool that you can only afford to buy right now, that is what I would buy if I was you. It has everything you need in it to get started. Including the monthly reports that Cotton it, was talking about. Mm -hmm. It has that feature as well. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. And it's if, you a, guys, if you have a question that's for a, for a, um, you know, like a couple of you have asked like really in-depth stuff, that's when you want to jump on a hot seat with Joe mm -hmm. on his, on his weekly hot seat webinars. Right. Because that's what they're for. To like look at your PBN or look at your site. Okay. It's not for, you know, a webinar like this. But, but that helps available. I just want to make sure you guys knew that. Right. Guys, this is just a bonus webinar. We're just trying to get some questions out 
will I be a whole lot more thorough and a whole lot longer, three hours long, uh, come in January? Because we okay. just wanted to give this, we, we have appointments that we have to get to in about 20 minutes. So we're trying to get through everything as quickly as possible. So I apologize if it seems like we're rushing or we're just being very curt or short. It says, is there any other tool for Google uh, Keyword Planner, cheap or free? Yeah, SEMrush. Uh, it's not free, but I but SEMrush. Uh, next question. Can you approach local businesses in another country? Well, of course. Absolutely. You can sell anyone anywhere. Newbie question. I saw a webinar about gigs, and there was one about Craigslist phone verified account. Can we please use this to our advantage? You can use whatever you want. Sure. Absolutely. Use it. It's on my website. It says, can you please define exactly what a citation is? Stephen, go ahead. Yeah, a citation is basically a typically a local directory um, that's going to allow you to upload your name, address, and phone number, or we call NAP, um, to it. Um, and so a, a, a citation would be like Yelp or Merchant Circle, okay? And those are something that do play a factor in local ranking. Great. History index, and he's talking about Majestic uh, SEO, which is a software. Should we do the fresh index or historic index? Both. I look at both, and I want them both to be very similar. If I see disparities from one to the other, I generally don't like that. So I like them both. Use them both. It says, uh, is it worth powering up a YouTube video just for the backlink? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. sure. Cotton and Steven, thank you all. The thank you, Jim. I greatly appreciate that. It says, I'm still watching OG training, but I don't understand the difference between hosting domains and subdomains. Yes. Guys, a subdomain is another extension of your website. Hosting a domain is like you can buy hosting services from like HostGator, other stuff like that, if I'm understanding your question correctly. A subdomain is an extension of your website. You'll generally see a dot. So in other words, when you do Weebly, like you can see my mouse up here, this dot, like this www is a subdomain. A lot of you guys don't know that. But a www is a subdomain. And when you see a site that is not a subdomain, like when we go back and click on my site, which is cottongrammar.com, that's not a subdomain because you can see. It's a root domain. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's like right off the root. This is a sub. So when you see something ahead of the dot, that's a subdomain. So this could say SEO. Facebook could do another page, yeah. SEO. That, that could be that. But that's, that's what a subdomain is. I don't want you to get confused with what hosting a domain is. Hosting a domain, you can buy hosting from GoDaddy. You can buy hosting from a lot of different places to host or kind of like a garage for your website. They just need it. You know, that's like where your website resides, where it sits. So hopefully that helps you and, answer that newbie question. Yeah, and if you do need a subdomain, you're going to do that on your hosting account. Mm -hmm. If you do, you're going to – once you have hosting for whatever domain, you would set up the subdomains directly through your hosting account. Very good point. You must have your host before you can have a subdomain. Got to yes. have it. Got to have it. So one must come before the other. Next one is, is which indexing services should I get some of my citations indexed with? And, Gre and Stephen and I don't recommend uh, indexing services. We just feel yep. that this should be done the natural way. Uh, Stephen Especially is, not for citations. Right. Stephen's brought up a very, very, very valid point that, that I took to heart. Uh, you know, he's a wise guy. You know, you listen to him when, when you hear his, uh, you know, I, and when he said it like this, I was like, wow, he's right. Do you really know what an indexing service does? Do you really know what they're doing? Because I don't. I mean, seriously, I don't. I mean, I mean, what indexing service, they all use different stuff. So what are they doing? And if I don't know what they're doing, do I want that pointed at any of my sites? Nope. So, I mean, that's the whole point. So if I don't know what they're doing, I don't know it. So I just don't use indexing services anymore. I just like Google find them myself or I send social signals at them. You know, I might, uh, you know, post it on Facebook or Twitter, or, you know, do, do that. And generally those get crawled pretty quickly and come back and you finally get indexed. So social signals. Yeah. Social signals are probably the best way to get something indexed. I, I don't, I don't know what these indexing services does, but guys, uh, that pretty much hold on. Last question I see that we've got. Uh, well, there's two more. What WordPress plugin would you use if I wanted to have an area where people can rent my site? I have no idea. We don't talk about that sort of stuff. Once again, Carrie, you're asking about training that we really don't cover in OMG. Guys, for Q&A webinars, assimilation webinars and everything, if we don't teach it in OMG, we're not going to answer questions on it. 
we're, we're just not going to answer questions on it. So that's you, you might want to tool around over at Source University where your fifty dollars membership is at, and they can probably tell you where to get that at. So next one is is the last one I've seen. I bought a PBN about three months ago, and it's still not indexed. When I purchased it, didn't look spammy. Do you recommend that I set it up for WMT to check for a manual penalty? Absolutely. Just create a generic. You can get a phone verified uh, Gmail account, fire it in there, see what happens, see what you get. But my most important thing is, guys, is how I get all my sites indexed instantly. I'm going to say it very quickly that we're going to end it, is always embed a YouTube video on your site and use the video XML plugin and ping for Google. And Google wants all of their YouTube videos, trust me, they like want them all indexed and, and, and people get into them because Google loves them some Google. They Google loves Google. And that generally gets me indexed right away. I just set up 150 PB insights over the last three weeks. Only one of mine were not indexed by that method. And I uh, logged into uh, uh, Webmasters and seen that one did have a manual penalty. So that's that's like what it was. But right now, see, Stephen, wouldn't you agree that even something's happened over the last two weeks where everything seems to be indexing a whole lot faster now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. try it again. And uh, that's it. Stephen, I'll let you say your last words and uh, we will call it a wrap. Yeah. Hey, guys, again, appreciate you attending. Um, and again, if we seemed kind of uh, quick today, you know, it's because this was meant to be a short webinar and we went a lot over more than we wanted to. But um, keep your questions limited to the content that we teach, if possible, in the group. Um, and if you need special or one-on-one -on -one attention, uh, be sure to jump on Joe's hot seat, okay? Um, you know, don't feel scared to share stuff in our private Facebook group, okay? Uh, and look forward to uh, helping you guys out and look forward to seeing you next year. To let you guys know there's going to be a massive webinar this Saturday. It's going to kick off Project Assimilation 2016. Be watching in your members area. It's going to be happening Saturday afternoon. We're going to have one nuclear bomb that I'm going to drop. But also, guys, you're going to want to know exactly previews of what to expect over the next few months. That's going to be this Saturday afternoon. We'll look for that very soon. The replay, guys, replays are generally up 24 hours. Assimilation webinars in 2016, they could be 24 hours to seven days after the webinar. It just depends. So making it live is very, very, very important. So guys, with that, have a wonderful holiday weekend. Have a happy new year. We will see you back in 2016 on Saturday. Take care, guys. Thanks, Scott. Yep.